Hey, welcome to chapter four, properties of matter. We're going to talk about uh, chemical changes, physical changes. Uh, we're also talk about energy and those types of things. And so let's start out. I'm talking, give you a quick overview of what we're going to talk about, uh, properties of substances, physical changes, chemical changes, the conservation of mass, uh, learning how to solve problems, take a short break, come back in, talk about energy, heat, uh, energy and chemical uh, changes, conservation of energy, and then energy in the real world. So let's get started out with the properties of a substance. Basically, substances have two kinds of properties, physical properties and then chemical properties. Physical properties can be determined uh, without changing the substance's composition. So you can grab any particular part of it and take a look at it, and you can determine those properties and not change the thing. You can take a sample of water and determine its physical properties, and it's still water when it's all done. So that's, one of, that's a kind of a definition of a physical property. Things like, and here are some examples of physical properties, color, odor, taste, the state that it's in, solid liquid gas, melting points, boiling points. Those are all physical properties. Determining any one of those doesn't change the nature of the thing that you're studying. Chemical properties, on the other hand, uh, talk about how they react, how they form new substances, uh, what happens when they create uh, that new compound when they're done. So that's what a chemical property is, is something that will then change the nature of that uh, particular substance. And here's an example showing sodium metal, the shiny lustrous metal, uh, combined with that chlorine gas to make the sodium chloride salt. And so those and there are an example there then of a chemical change, or the chemical properties of those. So which of these is not a physical property of aluminum? So when you look through all of these, which one will change the nature of the aluminum? Talking about its luster and that it's silver? No. Melting it? No. Determining its density? No. When it reacts with something, that changes the nature of it. So that's not a physical property, that's a chemical property. Which property of acetone is a chemical property? Give me a second to think about that. Once again, chemical properties change the nature of the thing. Once again, it's flammable. If you put it to flame and you light it, it doesn't, it's no longer acetone. It flames up and it turns into something else. It combines with oxygen to create a different substance. That's not true with the other ones. Specific gravity, that doesn't change the nature of the idea. That doesn't change the nature of the acetone. Boiling point, acetone, etc. So physical changes. So talk about those. When you go through a physical change, think about what a physical change is. Take a moment, think about it. See if you can come up with a couple examples. Pause the recording if you need to. Write down a couple examples of what you think a physical change is. So there are changes in the physical properties or states with no change in chemical composition. You cut up a piece of wood, it's still wood. Smaller wood, but it's still wood. Chemical changes, like for example the combustion of gasoline, what is that? Think, take a moment, pause if you need to, write down a couple examples of chemical change. So a chemical change involves the formation of a new substance with new properties. Gasoline has certain properties. When you ignite it, those properties change. It's no longer gasoline. So here's an example of a chemical change. You have copper wire, you heat it up, then the atoms of oxygen can, when, you, when, they, when they hit the surface, they then can react more easily with the hot copper than if it's just at normal room temperature. This reaction will occur normally uh, at room temperature, but it'll just take a long time. Things rust, things combine with oxygen. This forms a patina, 
look at the Statue of Liberty, that green coating, that slightly green coating of the Statue of Liberty is that patina that's kind of turned green over time. It has that darker color. In this particular case, it's a more black. And so that is a chemical change. It's changed from copper to copper oxide. So chemical changes involve a change in which of the following. Chemical composition, physical properties, chemical properties. So a chemical change always involves all of these. When you have a chemical change, the chemical composition changes. It's no longer sodium metal. It's now so sodium chloride. Physical properties. When you have a chemical change, the physical properties change as well. When the gas burns, it's no longer gasoline liquid. It becomes a gas. So the physical properties of the substances change when you have a chemical change. And then lastly, the chemical properties. Is the thing a liquid? That will change usually if you go through a chemical change. So everything changes when you have a chemical change, both the chemical properties and composition as well as the physical properties. Chemical change, which of the following observations is not a chemical change. Converting coal, which is a form of carbon, into carbon dioxide. Converting hydrogen to water. Converting iron to steel. Steel is an alloy of iron. Converting sulfur into sulfuric acid. So take a moment, pause if you need to, think about each one of these, and see from your perspective which one of these is not a chemical change. Just a note, when we talk about steel and we talk about alloys, we talked about that a little bit before, but just to, just to reiterate, reiterate that, that steel is an alloy made of combining iron with other elements. Most commonly combines iron with steel. So it's a mixture. It's a homogeneous mixture of solids. Okay? So knowing that, that's why that is not a chemical change. It's a physical change. You take the steel, it's still iron and copper. When you separate those, there's still iron and copper in there. It's just together they have different properties. But it's a physical change because you're mixing them. You're not changing the nature of them. You're changing the nature of the mixture. When you put them together, steel works differently than iron does. But the parts inside of there are not different. When you take hydrogen water and put it together, you're creating a new compound. It has dramatically different properties than the other one did. You can't just separate them easily. You heat up steel, you can separate out the iron and the carbon. You don't have to go through a chemical process to do that. So that's why that, that alloy, that mixture of solids, is not a chemical change. It's a physical change. Electrolysis of water. So here we're taking water and we're breaking it down into its constituent parts. So when you think about this, the formula uh, for this breakdown is you have water going into Hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So if you balance this, you have two of those and two of those. But the importance here is that to make that happen, it takes energy to do that. And so that's where the electron comes in with this electricity. And that's that picture right here. It shows you that you have this electricity coming from the battery flowing down into the water. And then at the two different uh, locations, it breaks down and you form the hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas. And so it shows you here 
that you have double the amount of the smaller hydrogen gas because you make twice as much for every molecule of water that you break down you generate two of hydrogen and then one of oxygen so that electrolysis, let, uh, electrolysis of water then is an example of a chemical equation that breaking down that process a chemical change so we've talked about a little bit of these in lab where you have the word equation on the top where you go through and use the words to express what's happening the molecular equation is basically pictures showing you those molecules as they break down in this case decomposing into other products reactants becoming the products and then the symbol or the formula is then the words in this case the symbols the, the atomic formula expressing that in this case decomposition the water turning into the oxygen and the hydrogen in the presence of that electrical energy so reactants are what you start with products are what you finish with when you have a change in this case the little delta t there that that delta sign means a change in something in this case usually it's a change in temperature so it takes some heat to make that happen faster so you have that change so that is a change that delta symbol is change in this case usually it's change in temperature but not always but in this case it is change in temperature and this shows those three parts again the words copper plus uh, height copper plus oxygen in the presence of in this case heat gives you copper two oxide molecules the two pictures of the copper individually because remember copper is not diatomic by nature hydrogen is so you have the picture of the hydrogens together there and then making those two copper oxide molecules then your formula on the bottom you have the copper plus the oxygen giving you that copper oxide so take a moment pause the recording if you need to and write down what you think these changes are so then you can test yourself and see how how you did so what do you think rusting of iron boiling of water burning of sulfur in air boiling an egg combustion of gasoline digestion of food sawing of wood burning of wood and heating of glass so pause write down your answer then we'll start up again all right let's see what you got All right, so we have rusting of iron is chemical, turning iron into iron oxide. Boiling of water is a change of state, so it's physical. Burning of sulfur in air, it turns it from sulfur to sulfur dioxide, chemical. Boiling an egg changes the liquid whites and yolks into a solid, as well as uh, changing them from proteins and changing the composition physical states usually can be sometimes can be reversed you can't unboil an egg once it's boiled it's chemically ch chained so you can't unboil it uh, the combustion of gasoline chemical 
digestion of food, your body metabolizes it, chemically changes it, removes the, uh, the energy as well as the nutrition. Song of wood, physical, you're basically making smaller pieces of wood, but it's still wood. Burning of wood, chemical, and heating of glass, physical. It's becoming pliable. You can then bend glass and change it, but it's still glass. You haven't changed the nature of the glass. So which is chemical? Corrosion, freezing, evaporating, or forming fog? Which is a change in the kind of thing that it is. Corrosion of steel, changing iron and steel to oxides. Which is a chemical change. Dry ice subliming, pennies tarnishing, ice cream melting or rock in the ground uh, turning into sand. So you have dry ice sublimation or subliming. Uh, that's a word that expresses the change from a solid directly to a gas. So you have, uh, you have melting, which is going from a solid to a liquid. So that's what melting is. Subliming is going directly from a solid to gas. Uh, that's what dry ice does, which is uh, frozen uh, carbon dioxide. So CO2 in the solid form uh, is dry ice. And so when that uh, gets to a certain temperature, instead of melting, instead of turning into a liquid, it goes directly into a solid. So it goes directly to a gas. So that's sublimation. So that is a physical change. Ice cream melting, turning from solid ice cream to liquid ice cream. That's a physical change. Rock is ground up into sand over eons of time and in the oceans, etc. That's a physical change. It's still rock. It's just a heck of a lot smaller. So what we're left with then is our penny tarnishing. So our copper plus oxygen gas becoming copper oxide, depending on the charge there, could be CO, CuO as well, depending on the kind of copper oxide. Copper can have a, a variety of different um, oxides there. So now we're on to a new concept, which talks about the conservation of mass, which basically talks about uh, the fact that mass is conserved. Um, you basically say that there isn't a change in total mass of a substance in a, in, a, in a chemical change. When you have all of the reactants, they convert to all of the products. There's a conservation of mass there. And there's an example here where you have aluminum plus bromine. When you put them in there together, the total mass of this side of the reactants results in the total mass of the products. The mass is conserved. The mass isn't lost. So when you do that addition, you have 5.4 grams of aluminum plus the 47.9 grams of bromine, it makes the 53.3 grams of bromine of uh, aluminum bromide when you're all done. So that means that those two, there's 53.3 grams of reactants and 53.3 grams of product. It's conserved. They have to be equal. And so that's the, the conservation of mass. So when we take a look at this particular equation and this particular problem. When you have carbon, when burned completely, forms carbon dioxide. If 11.7 grams of carbon dioxide combined with the 31 grams of oxygen, what's the mass of the carbon dioxide that's produced? 
So in this case, you're going to have the 11.7 plus the 31.3. add those together that's what you're going to get because the cons the law of conservation says they have to be equal so taking a step back let's think about how to solve problems we kind of work through these problems uh, many times in class now I want to basically want to formalize that and give you an actual structure for doing that. And we've kind of talked about that before, but I just want to list it here to make sure you understand step by step exactly what to do. So whenever you're solving a problem, you want to read the problem carefully, determine what is known and unknown. Every single time, read the problem, separate in your mind what you know and what you're solving for, what is the unknown. Plan your strategy. What are you going to do to solve the problem? What steps do you need to take? in order to solve the problem. What relationships? What conversion processes? How do you need to solve this problem? Plan. What are you going to do? Once you know that, then you can set it up. Logically, you're going to work through this process, and most of the time you're going to be doing unit cancellation, dimensional analysis, unit conversion. You're going to be just taking your known and converting it to your unknown that you're looking for. So how do you set that up? We've gone through that process quite a few times of having that line across and having those units in there so they cancel properly. And then how do you do that? You then calculate. You do the actual math. Multiplying the top, multiplying the bottom, and dividing those two results usually to then get your resulting answer with the appropriate number of significant figures. And then always go back and check your work. Make sure that your answer makes logical sense. If you're converting feet into inches, if you have one foot, you're going to have a lot more inches. So if you get a number that's small, you know that that can't be right. So think about it logically first. What should my answer more or less be? Should it be a bigger number or a smaller number? You can use that as a quick check. So let's take a break at this point. We're going to stop this particular recording. Might have a couple of other links in the class material. You can look at a video or two that relates to this information, and then come back and we'll end up then talking about energy and those other parts that go along with that.